Welcome back to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic where I'm going to do my very best to answer all of your tech and bike related questions. If you do have a question for us, please leave it in the comment section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech and we'll do our very best to answer it next week. Right, I think we better get started. First question in this week is in from Tim. I have a Canyon. Is it worth switching from 105 to Altegra Di2? I'd say it totally depends what you want. If you're happy with your 105 and you're not getting any problems, then I'd say stick with it. But if you are looking for an upgrade, then yeah, why not go for the Di2? It's really responsive, gives really quick shift in. You don't have to worry about gear cables and replace them and them getting mucky and all that kind of stuff. Although you do have to charge the Di2. You remember to charge it because you don't want to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Your gears run out and you have one gear to get home, up over the hills, down the descents, and it'll just be a nightmare. So do remember to charge them. But yeah, as I said at the start, if you are happy with your 105, why not stick to it and save your money and take your bike on holiday? Next question is in from Aiden. I'm struggling to remove some seized pedals. I have a proper pedal wrench with a long handle, but they just won't seem to budge. Any tips for getting them off? First of all, I would coat the coat them in penetrating oil and leave them to soak. It's good that you've got a long pedal wrench because that will help to get them off. Make sure you're trying to get them off the right way because I've seen a lot of people trying to get their pedals off and they've just been pushing the wrong way and they've just been making them tighter and tighter. That being said, a good little tip is to start by tightening the pedal a little bit so if the threads are seized, this will break the seal and then you can undo them. After that, you're just gonna have to put as much force as you can to get it off. Um, another little tip is you can put a scaffold pole on the end of your pedal tool and that will give you more leverage to get it off. Hopefully some of those tips will help you get these very stubborn pedals off. Next question about oval chain rings and this one is in from Luke. Can I ask if oval chain rings are worth changing for regular? I keep seeing adverts on social media about how good they are. I notice Chris Foom has them. Is there much difference? I live in the Lake District and have climbs like Hard Knock Pass to connect with. So any help going up hills is highly appreciated. So oval chain rings. I think they first came onto the scene in about 2011 or 2012 and Team Sky kind of started the hype on them. Froome was on them, Wiggins was on them, Garen Thomas. Um, and when they first started using them, they thought that their power was quite a bit higher using them. But it actually wasn't down to the oval chain rings. It was actually down to the SRM power meters that weren't calibrated for the oval chain rings. And then they calibrated them and there wasn't much difference at all in them. And a lot of riders went back to the regular chain rings. But I think Froome is still on them. So I'm guessing he feels quite comfortable on them and quite likes them. But I think this does come down to personal preference. You might try them and you might feel really comfortable on them, but they aren't gonna, they aren't gonna magic you 100 watts out of nowhere and help you go up the hills even faster. One thing I would take into consideration if you do decide to get them that you will compromise gear shifting on the front mech. Um, basically, there's a more chance of you dropping your chain with the oval chain rings, especially if you live in a hilly area. But let, let us know how you got on and if you did decide to get them and if you got on with them. I'd also not love to know if anybody else has ever tried the oval chain rings and what you think of them. Next question is in from Dave. My indoor trainer bag chain seems to dry out, make noises and rust within a week of cleaning and lubing the chain. Even when I lube the chain every couple of days, the chain seems to dry out much quicker than my outdoor bike does. So I always use a dry or ceramic lube on my bike and you will need to apply, apply that a lot more often than with wet lube. With the drying out, it could be just, it could just be because it's an indoor bike and there's a lot of temperature changes with you sweating and the moisture. Or it could be because it's an old chain so the chain could be, need replacing and that might help the situation. Um, but maybe first try changing up the lube you're using and see if that works. Headset question now in from Matthew. I want to inspect my headset because it's a little stiff and I know it's full of gunk from hydration and gels. The issue I'm having is after I move the handlebars and stem, my forks and spacers seem to be corroded and I cannot break them free. I try tapping with a hammer, but no luck. It does sound like you have a little bit of corrosion. and I'm going to assume your steerer tube is alloy. 
First off, I would try some penetrating lube like GT85 and spray it on the headset and stereo and leave it to soak in overnight. Make sure there's nothing clamping the headset to the steerer. Make sure, make sure there's nothing clamping that. And then after that, place a block of wood on the steerer tube and get a hammer and give it a good whack. And hopefully that will loosen it and get it out. Hopefully. Let us know how you got on. Power meter question now in from the pimp. I'm looking to get a power meter and I've seen there are loads to choose from. How should I go about choosing one? Power meters are a great investment, especially if you are a racing cyclist or looking to improve your power or your times or time trials and things like that. And they are really good if you like your stats. So first of all, I would narrow it down to how much you want to spend on this power meter because they do vary in price depending on what one you get. So you could get power pedals, you can get power cranks, um, single-sided cranks, or double-sided power cranks. Um, you can also get a power tap wheel, which I haven't seen that many of recently, but that was actually the first power tool I had was a power tap wheel. And that's quite good. You could change it from bike to bike, um, things like that. Um, the pedals are really good as well if you do have more than one bike that you want power on, so you could quite easily change them from bike to bike, whereas if you had the cranks, you couldn't do that as, well, as easily. Um, if you do invest in a power meter, it will be worth getting the most out of it and understanding what all the numbers mean. It'll be quite pointless getting it and just having all these numbers in front of you and not knowing what they mean. So I would recommend doing some sort of power testing. You can do a 20 minute test and that's really popular. I always used to dread power testing day cause just because I knew how much it's going to hurt. So yeah, make sure you're ready for that because it's going to hurt. But then you do get to understand your numbers, what your what your threshold is, all your zones, and what, what power you need to be sitting on, on, on a four hour ride, or if you're doing a 10 minute effort, you know what kind of power you can hold. So it's really good to get an understanding of the numbers because you will learn an awful lot from it. Now, last question in this week, and it's about hair. And it does say the question is from me, but I feel like it could be for Ollie too with his long hair. Well, long at the front and the middle, the back, short sides, anyway. How do you keep your sunglasses from getting tangled in your hair when sticking them in the vents of your helmet? Any tips? When I put mine in there, 90% of the time they get stuck. Right. The only thing I can think of is, so these socks on the arms of your glasses, these are like a rubbery, a little bit sticky. You can take them off actually, and then it'll just be the same as on the frame here. And I feel like that will make it a lot easier for the hair not to get stuck to the glasses but if you do do that please be aware that when you put them in your helmet they could slide out so just make sure before you go riding you put them in give your head a little wiggle around and see if they do fall out and if not you will be fine so yeah that's the only thing i can really think of unless you just get rid of the hair but don't do that just take the socks off and see how that goes that's it for the tech clinic this week. Hope I've managed to answer some of your tech related questions. Remember, if you do have any questions for us next week, please leave them in the comment section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. I will try to answer them next week.